Welcome back everyone! Today's video is a companion to my previous medieval Ren Faire dress. As I said in that video, I think that dress is a perfect base for anything. And today I'm gonna prove that to you, as I'm gonna turn myself into a knight. I'm gonna make myself a whole armor from leather, which I never worked with before, so I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so follow along and learn from my potential mistakes. <laughs> Because if I can do it, you can do it too. So I made a little concept sketch and there are a couple of pieces I wanted to make here. But I guess let's start with the easiest one. The As I never done leather work before, I was a bit unsure of it all. So instead of making my own pattern, I used this one from Etsy. But I did make a mock-up from a cheap phone and good thing that I did because it goes way too high up on my waist for my taste. So I played around with the mock-up until I liked it and transferred the modifications onto the pattern. Then it was time for the scary part, cutting it out of the leather. I tell you, I procrastinated doing this for so long. I used the discounted end pieces you can buy in the leather shop because I figured that most of my stuff is small enough to fit onto it and this belt just about did. <laughs> Because I was intimidated, I first worked on the belt hooks. As I reckoned, if I screw those up, I can always make some new ones. So I wetted them, burnished their edges and added little stamped patterns. Actually, I think in the beginning, I didn't wet the leather enough and that's why the stamps came out so shallow. So now that I had some practice, it was time for the main event, the belt. I used three different stamps to create the edge pattern and hammered away for about a whole day. My neighbors must have loved me. I still had some issues with the patterns not coming out visible enough and I think the problem was still the wetness. Someone later told me that you have to dunk the whole ladder underwater until the bubbles stop. In the beginning, I just used a wet sponge, because all my life I was told that leather and water do not mix. Anyways, please correct me in the comments, I just want to learn. So all the pieces are ready now. All I have to do is dye all of them dark brown and then I can get them assembled. One thing I don't know how I'm gonna do yet is it has these two buckles but mine is like this big <laughs> so I don't know if I'm gonna put this one buckle there or I'm just gonna let this belt keep it all together I'm gonna assemble it and I'm gonna see how it works out Now that I made a couple of pieces, I can tell you that the scariest part for me is not the cutting anymore, it's the dyeing. Okay guys, so I ruined it, completely ruined it. There was a small patch in the middle here and I tried to fix it by rubbing some new paint on it and it just like... It just all came undone. I just tried to fix it, I tried to remove all the paint and repaint it, but look at it, it's, it's just horrible, it's so patchy. I don't know what to do. I don't know if adding some more paint would help, but I ran out of old paint, so my boyfriend went to get some more. But maybe it looks okay to you now, but if I put this next to it, this is how it should look. This is how it should look. And this is how it looks. It just... I don't know what to do. It's so horrible. Do I need to redo the whole thing now? Buy new leather? Redo the stamping again? Which took a day. Or do I just keep going with this horrible looking thing? At the end I re it another couple of times until the tones evened out enough that it looks okay enough from afar. <laughs> Let's swiftly move on to the edge decoration part. That's basically a simple stitch with a leather cord round and round the edge. 
By the way, I owe a huge thanks to this person who uploaded their creation as a review for the pattern on Etsy. They done such a fantastic job. That's what convinced me to buy the pattern in the first place. So basically all I'm doing is following in their footsteps. I decorated the belt hoops with little rivets and punched holes on the belt for their placement. I attached the hoops to the belt with rivets too, but since then I also learned that rivets suck and pop open any chance they get and if you have any pieces that get a lot of tension on them, you should use stitches instead. But my poor past self, not having learned that lesson yet, proceeded to rivet each and every single piece of this belt together. Like these earrings that are there to hook stuff on, like to carry stuff with, and also the front one doubles as a skirt height. Very useful for adventuring in long dresses. And with that, the main body of the belt was done and I finally got to try it out. And when I did, I couldn't believe my eyes. I made this! Now, to keep it on my body somehow, I made these little cross straps thinner than the pattern ones. And used these beautiful medieval recreation buckles. I also riveted these on, but later on I had to stitch a couple of them on instead, as they let go quite quickly. Now the last piece for this belt was a belt <laughs> that I made from a prefabricated leather strap. And with that, this kidney belt is done. Now let's take a tiny respite from leather working and we're off into making some. I always had an utter obsession with scale mail stuff. So when I found out that you can buy these scales as a jumbo pack and they are not even that expensive, I just knew I had to make something from it. So I ordered a couple of bags of this high carbon steel scales from the Ring Lord. I actually just liked how realistic their color is uh, compared to the more shiny aluminum ones. Although they are quite hefty, so in hindsight maybe aluminum is a better choice. I had some experience with chainmail, I made some from a wire once and that was very painful. So working with the scale mail was not much different. I could try and explain to you how to make it, but I would inevitably fail. So instead I will link some of my favorite tutorials below. As I didn't have a pattern for the leather part of this piece, it was finally time to man up and make my own. I used the draping method and then made a mock-up from it from a thin EVA foam to check the fit. Luckily it doesn't need to be super tight as it will have buckles on all sides for adjustability. Before cutting it out, for some reason, I decided that I have to figure out the decorative pattern on it right away. <laughs> then I wetted the leather and etch the wines in with different tools. I'm mostly doing this part, but it came out decent enough.
I use the decorative stitch and the leftover leather cords from the belt to join the back panels together. Then I made some quick buckles and attached them to the shoulders. I decided to have the sides lace up instead of buckles because I was worried that the buckles would bug my arms as I moved. Then I attached the scale mill with some extra rings and it was time for fitting. So this is how it looks. I put on this piece that I have already done it is a little too short, so I'll have to add some here, but oh, it looks horrible. In my original plans, this should have started up here. So this front base is just way too long. And I guess I could cut it a little bit shorter, but then this design I did will be cut in half, which will look horrible. So probably... I mean, I will try and cut it and see how it looks, but if it looks bad, I'll just have to remake the front piece. Hopefully the back piece is fine. So yeah, that's the plan. Cutting this, if it looks bad, I'll just have to remake it. Make a new one, actually. Oh, I was so close. But it just looks so much better like this, if you can see it, than this. So I cut it and tried it on again. Much better. But I'm still having issues with the arm's eye, so that will have to be adjusted too. Once I was satisfied, I re dyed the edges and reattached the scales. It's finally starting to look right, although it's still missing some scales from the sides and of course the back. I added the back panel too and the length seems alright. Still I got some shaping to do. So this is where we are at right now. Um, it looks a little bit better than before. I'm okay with how it's cut, but what I'm not okay with is this bagginess here, which I was gonna solve by lacing up the sides here, but I encountered a bit of a problem, which I think I might be able to solve if I take out a couple of rows of scales up here, and instead of going through the, with this top row all the way down, I will go and take out the top two, maybe three rows and attach that one to up here. So it will be a little bit less scales on the side, but it kind of solves that gaping. But it's just a theory, because I never done this before, so we'll see. At the end, that solved all my problems, and I just added some hooks and rings to the sides for closure. Now, if you're a fan of my channel, you know that no video can get away without something getting embroidered. So let's make a- I based my motif around the same Lord of the Rings elven style as my cape. I even reused the flowers to make it seem like they are part of the same costume. The final design proved quite a task to embroider. It will take 5 hoops to complete all of it, so let's take the easy route instead. I couldn't 
fit any longer and I tried this on with the dress I'm gonna wear it with just to get a little bit of a sneak peek and my original plan was to have one of these in the front and in the back as well but trying it on I think that I prefer having it in the front but not in the back it kind of just takes away from the nice fullness of the dress itself so I'm gonna instead of having this like Y or T shaped thing I'm just gonna have like a straight bit in the back which I'm gonna embroider for sure because why wouldn't I? <laughs> um, but now I have to design that embroidery the lining pieces and ironed in some stabilizer fabric. I sewed the pieces together, right sides facing, flipped them inside out and ironed them. The last step was making the eyelets on either sides for closure. So, originally, this was going to be it. But then a certain game came along with some of the most beautiful armors in it and I got inspired to add some. So my original plan was to make the pauldrons out of EVA foam and make it look like metal completely. But I never used EVA foam before and I thought if I fill in all the gaps and sand it down really nice it would be smooth enough that I can make it look like metal. But it didn't. <laughs> I used the pattern from Etsy to make this top part. I only modified it a little to add this little point here. And the bottom part I just added myself. It looks alright from afar, but next to the real leather armor and the real metal scales, it looks a bit silly. Just looks like I added a cosplay piece onto a real armor. So I think I'm gonna scrap these and make the exact same shape just out of leather. The good news is that I already have the mock-up, so I can jump to cutting the leather right away. I added a bit of decoration to it, in the same way as the chest piece, sort of continuing the winds as if they are spreading from the chest to the shoulders. Then I added holes and sewed the pieces together. At this point, the pieces were still damp from the decoration phase, so I tried to shape them into a dome a bit with a random ball I found. I only outlined the edges on the lower piece, then I shaped the point of it with the ball too. A lucky side effect of the failed EVA foam project was that now I could store the damp pieces on them and as they dried, they kind of took up their shape. Then I dyed everything very carefully. And assembled them with rivets. Lastly, I wanted to repeat the scale mail motif on the pauldrons too, plus I had some left anyway, so I made two little triangular shapes, then added them to the strips of leather that also functioned as the underarm straps. 
done this time. I mean, for now. I just realized that I completely forgot to wear the tabard for the reveal. <laughs> Sorry.